start, let's consider the situation where a ball of mass M falls near the surface of the Earth. Let's say that the mass is one kilogram, and let's say the ball starts at rest and drops a distance of two meters. We'll neglect air resistance here. Let's apply the energy principle here to find the kinetic energy of the ball when it is in its final state, two meters below the starting point. If we make our standard choice a system as just the ball, then we know the Earth is the only agent in the surroundings that interacts with the system. So to use the energy principle to find the final kinetic energy of the ball, we need to compute the work on the system by the weight force. See if you can compute this work. Since the weight is a constant force, the work is just the scalar product of the weight and the displacement. So we find the work here, meaning the weight force transfers this amount of energy to the system. Now in this case, when we apply the energy principle, we know the change in system energy delta E is just equal to the change in kinetic energy. And since the ball starts at rest, we can solve for the final kinetic energy of the ball, which answers the question we posed. Now let's take this same situation choose the system differently. Let's choose the system to include both the ball and the earth. Again, we can ask the question, what's the final kinetic energy of the ball? Again, starting from our energy principle, we need to identify the agents in the surroundings and compute the work done by the surroundings on our system. Let's compute the work done by the surroundings on this multi-particle system. The answer here is zero. There's nothing in the surroundings interacting with our system so no agents, no interactions, no energy transfer by forces, so the total work in W is zero. Okay, then what can we say about the change in kinetic energy of our system? Give this question a try. The energy principle tells us directly that since the work done is zero, the change in the total energy E is also zero. Now, if we made the assumption that W E is equal to the total change in kinetic energy, then we might conclude that the change in kinetic energy of the system is zero. But that would be wrong, because as we already found, the ball clearly has a positive change in kinetic energy. Using a different choice of system isn't going to change that. As we'll discuss in a moment, the interaction of the ball with the Earth is too weak to change the kinetic energy of the Earth. So the total change in kinetic energy of the system, the system of the ball plus the Earth, should have the same total change in kinetic energy as the ball, which, as we know, is a positive change in kinetic energy. How can that happen if the work done is zero? Is the energy principle wrong here? Nope. Delta E equals W is completely correct. The change in the system energy is zero since there is no energy transfer between the multi-particle system and the surroundings. change in delta E involves more than just changes in kinetic energy. There's another energy we need to account for here in our multi-particle system. Now, for certain interactions like gravitational or electric interactions, these terms represent energy changes we'll call changes in potential energy, which we'll symbolize as delta U. We can now use this expression to solve for the final kinetic energy chose the ball as our system. Now, if we consider as our system as just the mass, then we know that the kinetic energy gains and losses are due to works done by the weight force and the spring force. We see the change in kinetic energy here, shown in blue in the graph, and we see that sometimes these forces transfer kinetic energy out of the system, and sometimes 